What's up, nerd family? Welcome once again to the Poindexter Lounge. My name is Enosh, aka Enosh Fett. And let me just start by saying today is a great day to be with me in the lounge. But hey, if this is your first time to the Poindexter Lounge, just know this. The Poindexter Lounge is a place for nerds. It's a place where you and I and my family and crew can get together and talk about the things that we love. Things like TV shows, games, movies, sci-fi, fantasy, uh, comic books, superheroes, toys, and so much more. And hey, if that sounds like something that you would like to be a part of, we would love to have you join this growing community of people uh, by hitting that subscribe button and also that notifications bell so that you know when we put out new videos because we are constantly putting out new content for you guys, we love doing it. And also while you're here, if you like what you see, please give us a thumbs up to tell YouTube that hey, people like this stuff and maybe they should invite somebody else to join us. Now today's video is gonna be something a little different because today's video is gonna be not about superheroes or all those things that we normally cover here in the lounge, but this video is about the people who make the lounge so special. You know, if you had to ask me what makes the Poindexter Lounge so special, why should I be a part of the Poindexter Lounge? It's because of the people. Now look, when we do live streams and we, we get together and we watch shows together and, and we just talk about things live, that's some of the best times that I ever have on this channel. Uh, not just making videos. I mean, I love making videos that you guys can see and comment on, but I love the interaction that we have with our subscribers. And uh, it's just been great. We've met some great friends along the way and it's just been a tremendous experience. And so I wanted to talk today and start a new series about some of the people who are special to us here on the channel. And hopefully one day, maybe, just maybe, you'll be a part of this series. So let's go ahead and jump right in to the nerd family. Now, this first guy that I'm gonna talk about is somebody actually who came to the channel in a different sort of way, didn't find us here on YouTube or anything like that. I actually found him. His name is Bruce Jennings. Right. I'm sitting like a little kid here, Indian style on my floor, which is kind of funny because this is how you used to play with the Star Wars toys anyway. There you go, there you go. All right, Bruce, so Matt, how long have you been a Star Wars fan? Oh man, I, you know, I, I'm an old guy. I'm not old. I'm 51. I, I remember back in '77 we went to see the first Star Wars movies, you know, and the toys came out. And my first Star Wars toy was that little the diecast land speeder, which came out yeah. in '77. I had the early bird package. They got me that for Christmas. They kind of ripped me off because I got the package for Christmas, but then I got the figures for my birthday. So it was like, yeah, okay. I, I remember being oh. angry. With it. But uh, yeah, since the first movie came out in 1977, 78, you know, that was like a big year for Star Wars. And I had a best friend up the road and we, you know, he had all the figures and we used to get together and play like, you know, like we did in the good old days without the computers and the phones and everything. Yeah. So it just, you know, it just took off from there. And then I got away from it for years and years. And then, uh, I don't know, about three, it was either three or four years ago, a buddy of mine, he asked me over for the Super Bowl and my wife and I, we went over and, he had a bag of the Star Wars figures. He had a couple of the original ones, and he wanted to give them to me. I'm like, no, I'll give, him, give you 10 bucks for him. Yeah, I felt bad. I didn't. Then it, it just brought back all those memories, you know? Like from when yeah. we was a kid and we play, it brought back all those memories. So next thing I know, I've got a huge collection. But... Uh, so that's all, so everything that you have is just in the last couple years? Yeah, I'd say about three, four years. Wow. Three, four years. Wow, man, you you caught up to me, man. I got I, I've been working on this for almost twenty years. <laughs> I'm just seeing, I see your collection and some of the stuff that you post, and uh, man, way to go, man! Uh, yeah, way to catch I'm, up. I'm in my Star Wars room. I'll give you a quick look around if you want. Yeah, it's just, be awesome. You can look at the tape later, but uh, that's all my carded figures there: Return of the Jedi, Empire Strikes Back, and the original Star Wars. And uh, those are all originals, the real ones. Uh, there's something I'm working on down there, and there's uh, that's uh, my Death Stars up there. One's uh, well, I customized one, and the other one's authentic. And I got a mixture of a lot of stuff. I mean, you go around the whole room, um, a little, little spending. Here's where all my vehicles are, and you know, it's just a real quick overview. It take me all day. It'd take me all day to sit here and show them all to you. Yeah, no, I know, I know the feeling. I know the feeling. Well, that's awesome, man. So. So you just got it. So you bought you bought those that little set there then, and that it just went from there, huh? Yeah. The funny thing is, he didn't even want to take any money for him. He was just gonna give them to me. 
And I'm like, really? no, 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 I'm not like that. I'm like, I got to give you a couple bucks. I had a 10 in my wallet. I'm here, take this. And then I researched to find out how much it was that he sold me. The stuff ended up, theoretically, I'm, I didn't sell any of it. I still have it all. But theoretically, it was worth over, worth over like $800. And I was like, uh, dude. <laughs> wow. But, uh, no, just wow. touching him. It, it's weird because I didn't think about that stuff for years until he you know, sold me those. And I started you know, messing with him. And it just brought back like so many memories from back then. You know, I remember yeah. going to the movie, just little things I'd forgotten about for years. And that's why I started collecting. So, so how old were you when you saw Star Wars then for the first time? I would have been 10. 10, okay. 10, yeah. I was born in 57, that 77, that'd be 11. I was 11 years old. Okay. Yeah, see, because I'm 43. And uh, it's weird because, you know, I was born in 76. And I remember going to see star wars at at one like it's it's yeah. crazy man i remember because it was i remember it being such a big deal between the times that i was one and three you know by the time empire came out yeah that we went all the time because it was constantly in the theater you know and the, and i remember my mom and my grandma always asking me what i wanted to do on the weekends or whatever and i just wanted to go see star wars so you were 11 years old you have probably a little bit better perspective on what the culture was at the time, maybe than I do. Like, what was what was it like to be 11 years old and that type of movie come out? Well, you know, we didn't know that movie was going to be such a game changer for our lifestyle, basically. Because Star Wars, the toy line, the movies changed everything. Because you know, back then we had uh, I'm trying to think what else came out. The Star Trek, Star Trek movie came out back in 1979, I think it was. I could be wrong about that. I'm not a Star yeah, Trek fan. Right. But yeah. uh, it was, okay, it was another space movie. But Star Wars just seemed to change everything about what we knew about special effects. I mean, they started, they, but they used a blue screen back then. And mm -hmm. everything was, and it just changed it. And with the Kenner toy line coming out, everybody was it was just a big change as to what we were used to, the toys were, we had before then. And the, the movie was just a turning point for entertainment altogether. And for our childhoods, like I said, we, we did that through the late 70s and all through the 80s. It was Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars, up until about 85, whenever people started losing interest. And yeah. then of course, you know, but uh, it was just, it was just different than anything else that had come out before. So you started uh, collecting Star Wars stuff. So what is your what is your favorite Star Wars movie? Oh, Empire Strikes Back, of course. Absolutely. It's the same with my wife. I said, when we were talking about it, I asked her what her favorite movie was. She's like, Empire Strikes Back. I said, that's my girl. Absolutely, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, what, was, what was it about Empire that, that stands out to you uh, above the rest? Hey, that's a good question. I just... The first Star Wars movie came out, and I just think this, you know, and it was great, of course, it got me hooked. But when Empire came out, the graphics were better. I think they invested a little more money into making it more believable. And the storyline also gave you a hook at the end, which Star Wars, which I'm not gonna call it New Hope, Star Wars didn't really have a hook at the end. It had the happy ending, and it had the big party, and everybody's getting their medals, except for Chewbacca, he got ripped off. But um, the Empire Strike Back left that hook, and they caught Han Solo and put him in carbonite. Gee, I hope I'm not spoiling this movie for anybody that hasn't seen it. <laughs> Spoilers! I, I think it was the hook in the end. I love the Hoth scene. That's my all-time favorite scene out of any Star Wars movie I've ever seen. I just, I don't know, all the snow and the ad ads walking around. It's just, it was just so powerful because they were just so immense. And I think that's what stuck with me and, you know, the special effects and, and the storyline and everything. And of course, we all knew the Han and Leia were going to get together. Even at 11 years old, I knew that. It was, it was just exciting. Yeah, there's, and, and that and that's for me too. Empire is my not even just favorite Star Wars movie. It's just my favorite movie because I think that it it's got everything. I mean, it's got like you said, it's got this great story. It keeps you guessing. It it throws just so many different things at you. And then, like right when you start trying to figure it out, Vader drops the bomb. Probably the biggest. You oh. Know, I don't even know if you want to call it a cliffhanger, you know, uh, revelation, you know, of any movie ever. I mean, something that's stuck for now for 40 years that people still quote that, you know, and, uh, 
What's that? Nuclear plot twist. Yeah, I mean, it really was, you know, it just it, totally out of left field. And and then there's the question is, is he lying? Is he telling the truth? Is that, right. is that you know? Yeah. It is it's definitely um, amazing about the longevity of how long that movie has lasted. And even today's children, you know, adults our age are making sure the kids watch the original Star Wars trilogy and they're into it. I mean, it's not like we're pulling Logan's run out of the VHS pile and say, oh, watch this. This is the coolest movie ever. It's, it's always Star Wars. Always Star yeah. Wars. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that's cool, man. So um, so you got back into collecting or you started getting into collecting. And uh, what what are some of your favorite things now uh, to collect? I know I saw that you had a bunch of carded stuff back there, original carded stuff. I mean, is that your thing? Or like, what are those things that you like? that you look for my, my, when I decided I wanted to collect original I wanted to have more figures than my best friend Sean when he was growing up he seemed to always have everything so a little bit odd. I still talk to him to this day so I started collecting and picking them up loose and everything like that and then getting the Carter ones so I, I, I achieved that I have everything from the first trilogy Star Wars Empire Strikes Back Return of the Jedi I don't I didn't buy the droids figures or anything like that I'm working on my power of the force collections last 17 I need a couple more for that but that, that was my original intent. And I wanted the, the, the vehicles too, just for the first trilogy. And I'm almost there. I've got a few like play sets and stuff that I don't really like. Actually, I make I make the play sets now. And I try to help out other collectors, you know, with a replacement at a reasonable price. But, um, you know, I don't charge a lot for it. I just want people to have like, uh, like the Rebel Command Center, there's a base for it. Everybody still has the base, but no one could find the background. So a couple bucks, I make one of those, and they, you know, people seem to like them, you know, for their collections. But I just wanted the first trilogy and in the vehicles. I mean, Millennium Falcon is my favorite vehicle. I've got the original one. I've got a legacy Millennium Falcon that I just built a case for. It's not in this room. It's actually in our living room. It's a giant coffee table. It came out really nice. I'm surprised my wife let me do it, but. Uh, yeah, the Millennium Falcon's definitely my favorite piece out of everything. And I think shortly after that would be the ad at. And I, I, it's funny because you mentioned both of those things and like literally on the other side of this camera, I'm looking at my legacy Millennium Falcon that I just got this last uh, spring when we went to the Motor City Comic Con in Detroit. Uh, I've been wanting one forever. So I, I know that feeling like I just, I love that, that vehicle. And yeah, I mean, I've got, I've, I've got my Millennium Falcon over here, like the old one, you know, and stuff. And then I got the Power of the Force one that came out. And uh, I, I've tried to get each one of my boys a Millennium Falcon of their own and kind of piece it together, you know, and stuff so they can have their own. And then it's funny because right above my Falcon is uh, is an ad app. So, <laughs> so I'm right there with you, man. That's that's cool stuff. So, so you, you started collecting. How did you get into doing these uh, these like reproductions and and you know pieces that that you make? Well, um, I just enjoy, I may I, I work with wood a lot all, all the time. I make uh, patio furniture, things like that, in, as a hobby in my spare time. And uh, I have all these tools and I'm looking at stuff, and I'm like, I've always had ideas to make different figures, for instance. And it started with me repairing old figures. I did a couple of them, I'm like, oh, that's cool. Somebody bought them off me, and I'm, they're like, you're really good at it. And I started putzing around with the Star Wars stuff because I had a lot of broken things. And I'm like, well, I started the what if I called what if I, well, what if I try to fix this? You know, what if I go on eBay and get some replacement parts and you know try to build this back up to its original luster, so to speak? I started yeah. doing, then I got a full basement, and I'm like, okay, what if I start selling some of this on eBay? You know, make some room. And then I've just been doing it ever since. I, I enjoy building things. I enjoy fixing things. Um, I like to buy junk boxes. Like someone will put on eBay, they'll have a, a junk box full of just pieces, parts. And I paid, I remember I paid $25 for this just box of junk. It has some Death Star parts in it, some ship pieces from this, that, and the other. And I just separated them all and I started collecting other pieces, built them back to an original unit. And, you know, some of them I kept, some of them I sold, some of them I gave away. I just enjoyed, it's relaxing. You know, I, I work a full-time job, I come home and it's like my mind scrambled. It helps me calm down and settle. And it's just, I just enjoy doing it, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so first of all, dude, so, you know, 
what I saw, and I, and I got a couple of your pieces here because I figured we we talk about a couple of these things and I can I kind of edit it in. So I'm a Boba Fett fan, huge Boba Fett fan, always have been. Obviously, Empire Strikes Back. You know, I'm one of these guys that. I, I, in the 90s, you know, Boba Fett was super popular and everybody loved Boba Fett. Now I don't know what's happened. People act like, you know, they're too cool for Boba Fett or something. But I'm like, screw that. <laughs> I, <laughs> God, I, like I, I got the talking one sitting up there. Oh, do you? Yeah. yeah you get one so, of those? I'm a huge Boba Fett fan. And so I got, I started, um, I don't know if you've ever seen, um, uh, it was a Galaxy Toys, uh, Dan Larson. Uh, on on YouTube, but uh, I, I saw a video of his, and kind of reminds me of what you were talking about. Uh, so a little over a year ago, I saw a video of his, and he he had started something called the Boba Set, where he started army building basically Boba Fett figures, vintage Boba Fett figures, uh, and he started with his original Boba Fett that he had when he was a kid. And he started just kind of, they do like this little documentary about it because he had built it up to over 300 figures. Wow. And yeah, and so like their channel is all about toys and stuff. And so like people send him Boba Fett's in the mail and you know, and everything. So now his, you know, he doesn't, he probably doesn't even have to buy them, you know, anymore, you know, but, uh, but he did this whole thing and it was very heartfelt because like he's sitting there like in an interview kind of, you know, professional thing, but he's just talking about how like his his love of, of collecting and stuff that he realized that it went back to kind of that kind of thing was like he would look at his original figure and just realize like why he got into collecting toys and and playing with toys still and and he said you know he says that's why he collects these boba fets he says because they don't have to be in perfect condition you know they you know he doesn't go after like the most pristine you know figure or whatever but it's just he, in fact, he says sometimes it's even better to get stuff that's all messed up because you know that man, that figure's been through a battle. So oh, yeah. kids love that thing, right? Someone loves that figure, yeah. Yeah, and so like that figure can almost be like more special and more important to you than you know the the graded whatever. And um, and so, anyways, it's like I just got one today. I'm at uh, I'm up to this is number 78 and you're gonna love how this one looks because I was telling my son this before uh, uh, we got on here. So check this guy out. This thing has seen some damage. I don't know if that's melted crayon. He's got some uh, cranial damage here. Uh, just all kinds of fun stuff. But that's number 78 for me. And, okay. uh, and I I'm just, that inspired me because I, I had my original Boba Fett still from when I was a kid. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to start doing that, right? So uh, so I started doing that. So now I got this little, nice little collection of Boba Fetts. And I don't army build anything. I mean, I got some extra stormtroopers and stuff like that for play sets and stuff like that. But I don't like army build stuff. But um, that's how I came across this guy right here doing it because I was looking up vintage Boba Fetts. And I came across your guy right here and I was like... Well, that's different. That's that's something that's unique. Because at first I thought I thought it was like a, a, a the uh, a prototype shock trooper Boba Fett, you know. Um, and then I saw what it was, and I was like, "Well, that's really cool." And and that's that's why I bought it because I was like, "Hey, that'll be a cool different addition, you know, to my Boba Fett uh, collection." And when it came, I was just I was just really impressed with it, you know, like. I'll be honest with you, and and this is probably my fault for not reading the description <laughs> enough. But like, but like when I got it, I was like, wait a second, it doesn't move. Like <laughs> the the arms and legs don't move. Um, but then I was like, no, that's pretty cool because it's it's unique. It's more kind of statuesque and stuff. But that that gets me to the next point I want to talk about. So doing these repros and like fixing old you know, toys and stuff like that. I know we talked about this offline, but I, I'd like to talk about it a little bit here. Repros for some people are a very controversial topic. You know, oh, there, there, there's, there's purists out there, you know, who will say, you know, don't do it, don't do it. And I know that you talked about uh, to me about how one of the reasons why you don't have them moving and, and different things is because you started selling these on eBay. And you can kind of talk a little bit about about why uh, 
some of your stuff, you get your own little signature in there or, or they don't have articulation and stuff because of, of that. Yeah, the last thing I want is for someone to take one of my uh, one of my customs and try to pa pass it off as the real deal and rip somebody off and then have somebody get it thinking it's real and find out it's just something that I made. You know, and then I try not to um, duplicate it perfect. Like, like I'm not going to take a... Uh, uh, I'm not going to take a blue snaggletooth. I could do it. I am good enough. I could make it look just like blue snaggletooth and I could make the limbs move and everything. But then they, the, the, you know, I, I believe as far as collecting, everybody collects their own way. Now, with that said, you know, the, the hardcore ones, the one that want everything men on card, they don't want any repros. I respect that. I'm, I'm not really that way. But as far as selling it, I do get their point. I don't want anybody taking my stuff, you know, knowing they, that it's a recreation or a replica or whatever you want to call it and reselling it to somebody else saying, oh yeah, this is the real deal and ripping somebody off. You know, I, I, that's why none of my, and anything I sell, the limbs will never move because that's a telltale sign. Hey, it's not real. And yeah. uh, I, I do have some around here that I made for my own self that I'm never going to sell that uh, you can't tell the difference. It's just a challenge to me, but I would never mm -hmm. put online and say, even if I said myself, this is a customer, this is a recreation, um, because there are people out there. I do see my things that I have sold already reposted on e eBay, someone trying to resell it, whether they didn't like it or whether they, and they charge more money, they think they can make some money and that's fine. But when I put my stuff out there, I know even a layman is not gonna think it's the real deal. Yeah. I don't wanna be that guy. And I, and I really respect that. I mean, I really respect that because because uh, there's some people who just wouldn't care, you know, if they're good enough to, to make stuff. I mean, all the time I see all kinds of, you know, um, auctions on eBay and, and different things where it's like, you know, you got to go into the whole, especially with like, you know, weapons and stuff like that, you know, uh, reproed weapons, you know, that, that people will talk about, well, this weapon's real, you know, it, it, they got the float test, you know, or whatever it, it floats or whatever, if, if it's real or whatever. Either way, I don't know which way that goes. Uh, but, um, but you know, it is it is a problem out there because a lot of people they do want something that's complete, that's original, and they'll go to eBay or online somewhere or whatever, and they're looking for something. And you know, and if they're that kind of collector, the the reality is 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 people charge a lot of money for that stuff for those missing pieces you know that you got to piece something back together and um and if that's important to somebody then you know i, I really respect the fact that that you understand that as being that you know that you don't want to put something out there that is going to be misconstrued or somebody's going to take advantage of somebody or whatever and so not. i mean you know i don't even like to call my stuff repro because it's all different but like the boba fett you just uh held up I, I make a few white figures like that and I, I make them so people can paint them because it's relaxing to sit there and some people like to do that and I've had people you know custom their own colors make their Boba Fett or um uh, even C-3PO I had somebody do did a droids version of C-3PO in their own colors it looked pretty cool they sent me an email to show me what it looked like when they were done they were happy with it and that's why I do it but he, he still said I wish I had one that the limbs move I'm like no you don't you know it just their figurines are going to stay that way. I'm, I, I'm glad people like them. Um, you know, I'm still here to do them, but I, I just, the last thing I want is for people to take them, even if they paint them themselves and make them look gorgeous. And I see it on eBay being sold as the real deal. I, nah, it's just, it's not fair to any other collector. You know, nobody wants to get ripped off. If I buy a repro, I, I know it's a repro, but if I buy the real thing and I get a repro, I know I'd be angry. You know, yeah. I don't like that. This is, this is supposed to be fun. You know, it's not supposed to be stress. It's not, you know, we, we, we collect because we like it. It relaxes us, makes us happy. So why, why put fuel to the fire, so to speak? Yeah. And, you know, and there's been many things that I, that I have uh, personally collected. There's some pieces that I've had to piece back together, especially, especially when I got back into collecting GI Joe stuff, especially uh, because there's like lots of these shells that you can buy, but like it's missing this one little piece that like, I, I think about uh, the USS flag. I got a, I got a flag uh, from GI Joe and that's the aircraft carrier. And like, there's the, literally this one little, it's the fan tail railing. So it's like the, the arm railing on the back of the ship. And it's like this tiny and the reason why it's so expensive, like people are selling it for $225. That's like the, the most that I've seen it. But 
uh, wow. what it was 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 in the extrude. It looks like an extruder piece. You know, it looks like a, uh, an injection molding extruder piece because it all came on. You know, one of those punch out things. And so the parents putting it together, they didn't realize that it was that. So it got tossed and thrown away so much. And so now when you try to go buy one, it's that. Well, for me, it's like I got this. I when I got my flag, I got it super cheap, and it doesn't matter to me. You know what I mean? Like a no, little piece of plastic like that is not worth two hundred and twenty-five dollars to me. <laughs> you know, uh, there's no way. There's no way. So for collectors like me, where it's like. I'm not going to turn around and sell it. I just want to have it to look at. I want to have it for my own collection. I, you know, I want to have it for that. Like, it's not that important to me, you know? Yeah. But of course, I know for myself too, if I ever turned around and sold it, like I got a, I got a list of anything that I have on stuff that's not, you know, the original or whatever. But I know that there are people out there that unfortunately they, they don't do that. But I think it's really cool that you're mindful of that and that you, you've taken steps to, to make sure that, that 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 can't be done with your stuff i think that's that's great because we we collect these things because they make us happy right we right. do this because, like i'm sitting in a room full of plastic and and toys because it makes me happy and i think that's why you should do anything that you do and if you're going to collect toys man people get all worked up and bent out of shape about stuff and it's like at the end of the day, I just want to be able to come into my toy room, sit here, look at my, my, you know, have a cup of coffee, look at my toys, think about, you know, some of the stuff that I did when I was a kid and yeah. just have. Same here. Same here. Cause, cause you sent me, you sent me a few, uh, different ones here. Uh, so you sent me the yak face. Um, right. you sent me, uh, you sent me another boba and then you sent me this Imperial officer, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, now when you do these, like, so what are you are are you using like like just old figures and and you've just kind of perfected how to cast them and stuff like that? I mean like because they're, they're castings of the old figures with a little change in it, so I can identify it. I'm not gonna tell you what they are, but there, there's, little, there's little teeny things in there that tells you it was mine. Some will have my my initials carved in its butt. Some will have uh, you know, this like Yak Face has a, has a special dent in its uh, right wrist left wrist and it's it's left so but you're right if you're looking at it face on if that's okay. the mold if that's a clear one that's probably not the same mold that's the that was the first mold the second mold is the one that has the dents in the wrist okay just uh, this little things i think that's yeah. the one that should have a hole in the scarf in the back of the head there should be a hole right there just little things like you know so if yep, i ever, he does. yeah is it, I, think, I think so, I think so. They're very small. It like it. It's not yeah. meant to like the figure, but just in case I do see it, I'm I can be like, but I'm not really worried about anybody duplicating that one. That's that was a custom, and you know, I only made, I only made like three of them. Yeah, because it, this just blows me away, man. I mean, like, because because I'm a collector, and I love I love collecting, and I know what I think is cool, but like that somebody like you can take your knowledge of how to do something like this. And, and you know, maybe it's just my, my, my ignorance of like how it is, but like, I look at something like this dude and I'm blown away by it because I think that this is so cool. When you sent me, when, when I bought the Boba Fett from you, I was just like, like, I, I, I wouldn't even know what to do. You know what I mean? Like I would like, I wouldn't even know where to get started on something like this. And you're doing these cool things. And, and then I, you know, I've seen some of your other stuff, man. And you know, like your your play sets. You know, I saw I saw your old uh, your old Death Star play set, the uh, uh, the cardboard one. Oh, the Palatoy Death Set, Death Star. Yeah, that was yeah, a hard so, one to make. Yeah, I mean, tell me, because because I mean, these are castings. I mean, I kind of understand a little bit how these are made. You make a mold. You know, you do those things. But I mean, like when you're when you're making these backgrounds and and they look so good. I mean, I'm looking at the stuff on on your page and stuff, and I mean, and that's why I reached out to you on on uh, on eBay because I was just like, I was seeing some of this stuff, and I'm just like, this guy is, is doing some special stuff, and it's for and it's like you said, like I, I appreciate the fact like you're not you're not charging an arm and a leg for stuff, 
you're, you're trying to give people something that can make them happy, that can bring some joy to their life, something that maybe they would never see the real thing. You know what I mean? Because it's not like you can just go out and get one of those things. You're going to pay a pretty penny for the real thing. But to just have something that's similar, that's cool like that. I mean, like, how, what is your process of even doing that? How do you, you know, you don't have to tell me how you did it, but you know what I mean? But give away your secrets. But I mean, like, what is that? Pro how do you decide, like, I'm going to make this cardboard background and make this thing look like this? I, I don't know. I just pretty much just grab projects and I get an idea in my head and I'm like, well, it's, it'll start with, I want one. You know, if it's something I haven't made before, it's something I want. I'm like, well, I, I want this. Or this one, like the the, the, the the ghost ones that I made, um, the clear ones, I'm like, I want one. So I'll make one. I was like, well, hey, this is pretty nice. Next thing you know, other people want it and it'll end up on eBay eventually. So I'll make a few more. I figure if I like it, someone else might like it. And if not, then I got what I wanted. <laughs> It's that's, that's, too. I just get uh, I just get an idea you know what I might want and you know try to there, there's a lot of stuff that I fail at too you can ask my wife we got garbage cans full of my failures that uh, that doesn't come out right you know I, I threw one on Facebook the other day I was trying to make a ghost Darth Vader a hologram Darth Vader which I did accomplish but the first one it just looked like garbage I put it on Facebook I said see I make my failures too but there's been weeks whenever I have time and I'm down here, you know, doing it as my hobby and the garbage can gets filled up and I get nothing accomplished. But then, you know, you work on that, you learn from it, you practice, you get a little bit better and I'm stubborn. You know, if I have an idea in my head, I think I can make it happen, I make it happen. It just sometimes yeah. takes a lot, of, a lot of practice and failures till I get to where I need to be. It's it's all about, you know, you, you gotta have a passion for it because it, it can be difficult until you get it down. And then once you get it down, you can, it's no problem because you know what to do. A lot of trial and error. That's what I want to say. So you mentioned your your new uh, clear ones, man. Those those ghost figures, man. Holy cow! So I was following you on, on Facebook this week as you were posting that stuff, man. And it's so it's so funny to me because it's interesting how you can take what is just a figure you've seen time and time again, right? So yeah. it's like it's like you know I got. I got 80 of these guys, right? You know, in, in different forms. But I see this, and this is cool. And, and like, I think I was telling you, like, when I first got this, my first idea was, oh, I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna paint this, you know, and, and do whatever. And then I got it, and I was like, I don't know, it's different. So it's like, it's just maybe the basic casting or whatever. But I was like, I just kind of want it that way, right? Like, because it, it stands out. It's different than the other one. It's just seeing it in a different format was just kind of cool. Um, and it's same thing like with your with your clear figures, you know, it's like it's cool to see like you take those retro figures, man, and like, dude, that Darth Vader and that Princess Leia, that is just that's on fire, man. That is that is so cool. And the fact that you're you're designing so I mean, you're not only working with, with physical stuff, I mean obviously you're designing stuff, you know, as far as backgrounds and 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 printing that stuff i mean and, and making it look good and that's amazing oh yeah i, I like to make good you know like to, i like it to look nice when i'm done no matter what i'm doing but you, you would ask me before about me what got me started doing that and i and i just remembered what actually made me start doing all this with the different not not the not the repairing the ships and things but to actually do something some customizing was when we were kids, we didn't have a Tarkin. Everybody wanted a Tarkin. I made a Tarkin, and it, I wish I had it in, I don't know where it's at, it's here somewhere. You're just gonna take my word for it, but I had it, I made a Tarkin, and I was proud of that Tarkin for about eight months, until Hasbro <laughs> decided uh, to make the old Tarkin in the game, which I have that too. And they brought it looked almost the same as mine. In fact, my wife told me my head sculpt is better than the one they put out. Like I said, those clear figures, it's like I told you, I, I gotta have those. I, I got, <laughs> I got, and it's so funny because it's like, it's this, you know, it's the same mold, it's the same whatever, but it's like, man, that is just so killer. And an another thing, so when I opened up that care package that you said, and you, and you, and you, and you know, and I got, uh, cause you sent me another Boba Fett, and like I said, I, I, I kind of told everybody I, I want to do this maybe as a giveaway or something like that for the, for the channel and stuff, cause we do the giveaways and stuff, and so, you know, like, so that people can have one, you know, physically of, of your of your things here. Um, but, you know, so like I saw the Boba Fett, it's like, okay, I already got one of those, That that's cool. And then, you know, saw the Imperial uh, uh, officer, I was like, 
that's super cool. I, I love just how clean he looks and just that that's really cool too. And of course the yak face, I was really impressed with because I wasn't expecting a yak face. I was like, that's, that's pretty cool because I, I would never ever get a yak face any other way. <laughs> so, so the fact that, 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 that you sent me this one, yak face, I was like, that's pretty sweet. You know, and I may get around to painting him one day or something. I was like, that's cool. But I'm going to be honest with you. I had such a big smile on my face, dude, when I saw this Darth Vader. I, I can't even explain to you because, so a few years ago, they put out these comic book packs of, uh, of different figures and stuff from, from the uh, Legends, you know, series and stuff. And they had a white Darth Vader in there because it was like supposedly from a dream that Leia has in the comics or something like that of, of Darth Vader. Yeah. And I, I've never, I never got one of those. And I, I almost bought one from a local comic book guy, uh, but he had gotten it like in a box of stuff where some kid had played with it and it looked like it had pink all on it. And like, it looked like somebody had melted a crayon on that one. And yeah, uh, so it kind of took, yeah, so it kind of took away from it being white. But man, when I opened this thing, this figure right here put such a smile on my face because I was just like, that is awesome. I mean, the fact that it's got a white vinyl cape, it's it's that original Darth Vader. You, you even left the lightsaber out, you know, the telescopic lightsaber, because it all is one piece, so it doesn't slide in and out on this one. Uh, but dude, this right here made my day. I mean, yeah. I talked about this. You can ask my family. I talked about this for probably that whole rest of that week. I was like, I, I just kept telling. I am like so excited that he sent me this. I am so excited that Bruce sent me this. Like I just kept on and on and on. They were like getting sick of me here and talking about the white Darth Vader. And it just goes to show you, it's something, it's something different, you know. And um, man, I really appreciate this, man. I, I mean, I appreciate the whole thing, dude. Yeah, and, but awesome. this, but this. This was so cool. This was so, like, I, I just had to tell you that in person. Okay. Um, so something else I, want, I wanted to mention. So you did this too, and um, and I'll bring this up. So I was on vacation, and Target had their uh, their uh, uh, what you call it the, the special edition prototype edition Vaders that came out that you could only get online. There was, there was the San Diego Comic-Con. They were supposed to be, I don't know how they're Comic-Con exclusives, but you can get them on, online on target.com. I'm listening. Okay. So, so those came out and I was waiting for the 21st of July for that very reason. Yes, sir. I was waiting for the 21st of July for that very reason. And, uh, and I put out because some of them were, were showing up at a couple of stores and then you sent me this, dude. And my, my little thing came off. I got to glue it back. But I've, I've been waiting to talk to you about it before I glued it back in. Because I, I uh, this one, this, see, this one shows up because it's not bright white. So anybody watching can see this, man. Yeah, I hate this figure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it at all. I bought it because, oh, I have to. <laughs> yeah. They said the same thing. They don't like it. Pick a color and stick with it, no matter what color it is. But you know, it's 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 like a like a human skittles or something. It's yeah. But I thought it was super cool because I know that you saw my post, and then you sent me this. Oh yeah. And and uh, in fact, I got. Uh, hold on a second. So I can. Um, kind of show here so this is the this is the the real one right and then this is and then this is yours and uh you kind of see there now obviously I, I got this out of the package here but uh but before i glued it back like i said i want to do that so you can see now you know i mean theirs has that shine or whatever but dude this this is awesome man and i'll tell you what if i had never been able to get one of these you know I finally, I finally found one. I waited until it came down in price because eBay was going crazy for this at first. I, just insane, all the scalpers. Oh, yeah. But, dude, this this right here made my day as well. Like when you sent me this and saw that I wanted one, and uh, and sent that to me, that just made me so happy. And it, I thought it was cool because 
your lightsaber actually this this one uh actually does uh go in and out there i'll show everybody yep and of course, of course the the limbs don't move but i actually am not yep. selling that one to anybody else i made that special for you and of course i made a copy for myself but i'm not selling those too too close for comfort if you ask me yeah yeah <laughs> To get someone for you know giggles and stuff i was cool with that but dude thank you thank you so much You're man this, this this just made my day and to know that you made that especially for me i i just appreciate that so much and i think it looks awesome and uh and it's got a special place up in my collection so i want you to know that i'm gonna i'm gonna glue that back on but uh thank you i i appreciate that bruce You're this, this is awesome. What would you say, out of all the stuff that you've made or you're thinking about making, what is your favorite piece? Like, what is your most prized piece that, that, that you've done? Oh, okay. Gee. I, <laughs> I, like I said, I, I do it just to keep myself busy. With my, I'm looking around. I, I guess it would have to be my custom Death Star. <laughs> Let's see if I can get a good. Both my feet are asleep because you made me sit on the floor. But I got my custom. You see here, I have the regular Death Star, and that's the custom one. A lot of that is parts that I made from scratch to duplicate because, like, it got it was junk. It goes from here over here. Wish the light was better. But um, I customized the Kenner Death Star. I think that's probably my my pride and joy. Either that or my Palazzo Death Star, which is upstairs. But okay. I think this is probably it. all the figures on here. I made almost all of them. Now over here is completely authentic. This is no repro figures, no nothing. Hey, there's my Tarkin right there. I was telling you about. You can probably zoom in on that later. But he's right there. That's the Tarkin I made. Okay. But uh, yeah, this is probably it here. The, the Death Star I made completely because never, never gonna sell it. But uh, yeah, I think that's probably my favorite and the Palatoy Death Star that I made. So, um, as we kind of kind of wrap, start wrapping stuff up, it, is there something still that you haven't made that that you want to make? Something that's in your mind, that's in your head, that like, because I know me as as a creator, like like as as a, as a musician, as a songwriter, as a as a guy who makes stuff, and, and I do video and I do all this stuff. Like, there's all these projects in my head, right? That it's like, ah, I want to do that. But then like sometimes I'll start to do it and I'll procrastinate or I'll find a different, pro I'll get sidetracked to do another project. Yeah. Do you have that project in your mind? Uh, it, I would have said the ghost figures because that clear resin is really hard to work with. And it took me quite a few tries to start getting it right. And I'm working on those right now. So they're still not perfect, but I don't really have any big ideas. They just come to me. Like I'll be sitting here one minute and I'm like, I know what I want to do. And the next thing you know, I disappear for a week. My wife wonders where I'm at because she's a widow because I'm in my shop <laughs> and making whatever. The last one I had would have been the case I made for my my legacy Millennium Falcon. It ended up being an entire table encased in glass with a diorama in the back and floor. It's on my Facebook page. You've probably seen it because it was just about yeah. a month ago. Yeah, but, dude, yeah, I saw it. That, that is phenomenal, by the way. That And I, and I love, I, I'm going to show some of that here in the video because the, I loved how you, you took pictures as you were as you were making it as you were putting it together um, and that's just a classic scene I mean that's just I, I wanted to do a video I, I really wanted to do a video but I don't know I'm no good at it I mean I get I get nervous and anxious and then I sound like a doofus so <laughs> I probably sound like a doofus now but I don't care but uh, I'm like well I also I, I'd love to see other people doing beginning to end like it, it someone someone posted on there said oh at first I saw the post it just looked like a pile of sticks I'm like yeah but this is what you could turn a pile of sticks into if you if you want to you know just to just show everybody that's interested you know you, you can do all this stuff yourself you can Joe Blow can anybody can it just takes a little bit of time and learning you know, they, you can learn how to make those figures I make on YouTube. They have videos on there. It's, I use them. That's not exactly what I do. I do have my own little secrets, but basically you can look on there and, you know, shows you the theory of it. If I, you know, I hate, I hate this saying, but it's true. If I can do it, anybody can, you know, it's, it's a hobby I enjoy, whether I'm building furniture or anything. If, if there's something you want, nine chance out of 10, you could probably make it. Yeah, that's true. 
That's very true. But it's cool because you put your own special touch on it. And um, and I, and I just in, in the stuff that you sent me, I mean, like I, I can tell and just talking to you, I can tell that it's a labor of love. It's something that you really love doing. I do. Yeah, I do. Hey, I and, could have more advices, you know? <laughs> that That's what I always tell people. It's like, I don't do drugs. I don't smoke. And every time somebody look, comes in my Star Wars room, he goes, man, that's a lot of money, isn't it? Like, you know, and I'm like, well, one, you wouldn't know this, but I'm extremely cheap. <laughs> you know? That's, uh, that's what I'm, I'm figuring out. Money <laughs> What's that? It says you don't drink and smoke. That's where all your cigarette money and drinking money goes. You save it there up for Star go. Wars. That's, like, that's what I say. You know, it's like everybody's got their thing, you know, and um, and toys and Star Wars has just meant that much to me that and I, and I think it's cool that, that something like Star Wars, it, it means so much to people like you and me that it's a part of our life. I think you said it earlier, like when we first started about how nobody knew back then how it was going to change everybody's life and oh, you yeah. know and i know it's a movie you know it's a movie in the bigger scheme of things it's you know not life and death it's not those things but it's something that really has transcended just being a movie wouldn't you say absolutely it's a it's a philosophy i mean if you think of the force may the force be with you and, and I went to a lot of Catholic church, so every time I hear that, I always want to say, and also with you. But with that said. <laughs> Tiffany, does, <laughs> Tiffany does that exact same thing. Yep, Tiffany does that exact same thing. I'm, I'm, I'm not Catholic, but it just it just makes me think of that. But it, it was, it, it set a human mindset of ways of thinking. I mean, even to bring people, all people closer together. I know guys that are into Star Wars from all walks of life. Like bikers, accountants, I mean, people completely opposite of me that we have nothing in common and you look at him and you say it made a force be with you and then you got right there an hour conversation because that's 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 the common point that's where you all it all crosses at our childhood and star wars being a huge part of everybody my age's childhood so it's just yeah. it's, it's it's just amazing how many people are into this phenomenon that's been going on for 40 some years yeah and that's you know, and that's why I that's why I say it's like no matter no matter what new movies come out, no matter whether it's your favorite movie or it's your least favorite movie, or if you like what they did with a character, if you don't like what they did with a character, if it came out the way that you you know wanted it to or not, it's Star Wars, and I love it, and I'm always gonna love it, you know. Um, it just is, it, you know. Like I, I don't. I see so much negativity sometimes nowadays from people with, with and, and that that's what hurts my it hurts my heart because it's this thing that we love right it's this thing that yeah. we've got so much invested into and a part of our lives and when I see people try to turn that around into some negative thing you know it hurts my heart because that's not what Star Wars is that's not what it's about you know and um you know, that's why I just tell people, man, just just love Star Wars. Just just keep loving Star Wars. If you don't like a movie, wait till the next one. They'll make another one. <laughs> you know, Disney's going to be making them now forever. You know, I mean, they're going to get their money back. So, you know, eventually they'll eventually they'll put out something you'll like. <laughs> well, Bruce, um, you know, man. Uh, so so I'll just say to, to you guys out there, anybody watching this. So the thing is, is is I bought a figure from Bruce. I plan on buying some more figures from Bruce because I gotta have those those uh, those ghost figures, man. Gotta have those ghost figures. Um, but you can find Bruce's work. Uh, obviously, we've been showing some in this video, but you can find Bruce's work. You sell on eBay. Is there any other place that people can find your stuff, or is uh, that? Is I, I never bothered with a website or anything. I just throw a few things up on eBay that I pe think people are interested in. You know, I think they can grab my Facebook. They can see I'm tagged in this race. They go on my Facebook. I usually put my stuff up there. My Facebook's just uh, me and my dogs and my hobby. Occasionally, if my wife's nice to me, I'll put a picture of her up there. But <laughs> uh, she's going to hit me. <laughs> uh -oh. But guys, I, I encourage you, if you guys, if you're collectors, whatever, man, if you're collectors, if you just, maybe you've never even bought a Star Wars thing before and you're just, you know, like, 
you're just like, I think that'd be cool. You know, I get people all the time who see my collection and stuff when I show my collection on screen and they're just like, oh, that's so cool. I wish I could collect stuff, but I don't even know where to start, you know, or whatever. If you just want something different and something unique, you know what? Just uh, visit visit Bruce's uh, page, you know, his, either his Facebook page or his, uh, I'll put up his uh, his handle for, uh, for eBay. Visit his eBay store, see what he's got there. And, uh, and support this guy because uh, I tell you what I like I said for the minute that I saw some of the stuff that you had and uh, and then we became friends on Facebook I reached out to Bruce and, and Bruce was so forthcoming he was like yeah man I, I, I loved how you responded to me because you were just like you know what I watched some of your videos I think it's pretty cool if, if you're serious let's do this and so that's what I wanted to do I wanted to make this video and, and put something together to just highlight you and I think it's I think it's cool because because uh, you didn't find us as a channel. We, we found you and then you came on board. And so now you're here and that's that's cool. And and uh, you're kind of like mold. I'm, I'm kind of like mold. Like first I start growing on you. Don't, don't really want me there, but it, I'm not going away. And then you just kind of accept it. And then here I am. <laughs> that's it, man. So so guys, you know, um, anybody, anybody out there watching this video, like I said, go visit his pages. Go, go buy something, man. Go, go buy one of his pieces, man, and and you know, put in the note, hey, I saw you on Poindexter Lounge or whatever, and uh, you know, and I and I hope that uh, I hope that Bruce's hard work can uh, bring some joy and some happiness to uh, to all of you Star Wars fans out there, because I know that, man, Bruce's hard work has brought me some joy and happiness, and uh, I, I think that's pretty cool. Well, hey, Bruce. Man, thanks for joining me tonight. Thank you for 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 sharing your story with us and uh, and just kind of talking about your love for Star Wars and, and what you do. And uh, I wish you I wish you good luck and, uh, and may the force be with you, brother. Thank you, man. It was great to be here. May the force be with you too. So as you can see, Bruce has got just a lot of really cool things. And so I'm thankful, Bruce, that you are a part of the Poindexter Lounge through all this. You know, that was an added bonus. You know, I just wanted to to, to highlight what I thought was some cool merchandise here on, uh, on the channel. But to have gained a friend, a fellow Star Wars friend and nerd uh, along with me, uh, has just been a bonus along the way. And I'm thankful that you are here. And uh, I look forward to seeing what more things you produce in the future. Now look. Guys, this is how Bruce and I got to know each other was because, you know, of, of social media and, and talking like that. So, hey, I invite you to leave your comments down in the comment section. Tell us what you think of Bruce's creations, you know, and that way Bruce can see that as well. And please follow us on social media so that uh, so that we can keep the conversation going long after the video is done. And maybe you're a creator. Do you have a YouTube channel? Do you have you made a fan film? Do you do animation? You know, that's what I love about the Poindexter Lounge. There's a lot of creative people here at the Poindexter Lounge, and I'm even part now of some of your projects. And that's awesome. That is so cool. So please follow us on social media so that we can talk, we can interact, you can share things with us, we can react to your videos. Videos. We can react to, to your fan films and your things and uh, and just be one big nerd family, like I said. So do that today. Also, if you're in a position where you can, we would love to have you as a Patreon here on the channel uh, because that's the way that we're going to make things better and up our production values. And, you know, there's all kinds of cool behind the scenes stuff you get uh, if you do that and you get interactions with us. And, and so we would love for you to do that and, uh, and help support the channel. Also, another way that you can support the channel is, of course, by going going to our merch store and buying a t-shirt or one of the many other pieces of merchandise uh, and, and items there in the store. We got two different logos. We got the original Poindexter Lounge logo and of course our Empire Strikes Back logo, which was actually made by somebody we're going to talk about at one point here on this new series. Guys, thank you for joining me. Like I said, I love doing this uh, here on on YouTube. I, l I love being in the Poindexter Lounge and having met all of you. And I look forward to talking about, uh, yeah, all 7,000 of you at some point. <laughs> but hey guys, until next time, my name is Enosh, AKA Enosh Fett. Just saying, stay nerdy, stay cool, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hey guys, if you made it this far in the video, you are awesome. Thank you guys so much for your support. Please smash that like button and of course subscribe and also hit that notifications bell so that you are aware when we put out new videos, which is like all the time. Thanks for being a part of the Poindexter Lounge and uh, we'll see you next time.